This is a video about a stand that I just built to put my uh, Panasonic microwave oven on and provide a little more drawer space in my kitchen. Um, it started with a couple of wild cherry boards that were cut from my backyard. Um, I started by just cutting them down to size of the pieces that I needed. Then there was some live edge on them. That next, I just took that and I um, went to the bandsaw and I removed that to kind of square up one side of them. Once I had one straight edge on them, I went and I ripped them so that they were eight inches wide so they fit on my joiner. And then you start by just flattening the um, one face on that first. Having a um, eight inch joiner really helps with projects when you're trying to deal with some boards that are this wide. Uh, my old six inch, I just would go through so much work trying to flatten things for projects. Um, after you get the one side flattened, then the next thing that you do is you push it, put that side up against the guide fence and uh, square up one edge to that. So now you've got your um, first 90 degree angle on the board, which will allow you to um, totally square it up next with rough cut and lumber does add a couple of extra steps to any project that you do but it's really well worth it um, after you get the two sides squared up the next thing I do is I go back and I run it through my planer to get the next side parallel to the flat side and then also bring it down to the final thickness that I require for the part that has uh, wild grain patterns like this stuff does I like to just run through and take several thin cuts so you don't wind up taking big chips out of it as you um, plane it. And the next step is to um, square up the last cut. And then what I do is I usually cut the board slightly oversized from what I'm going to need for the project. Okay, all the cherry boards are prepared. So next is time to go on to the um, maple that I will be using for the drawers. And I will go through the same process as I did with the cherry. Seeing how I don't have a kiln, this is only air dried. What I do is I take the wood and I stack it with stickers on it next to my wood stove. And I usually let it sit there for about two weeks before starting the project. If you want to see how the dovetails are made for the drawer, you'll have to watch the previous video that I made of the um, using learning to use a Stanley dovetail jig. Um, I decided to leave that out here because this is long enough as it is. After um, dovetailing the drawers, what I had to do is I had to go back and put some slots in for the base of the drawer to fit in. The uh, ends were through slots and the front and the back of the drawer had to be um, dropped down on and they're a buried slot that are blind and you don't see them from the ends. So you have to just kind of drop them on and pick them off the router table without breaking through the end. With all the parts for the drawer prepared, I just kind of do a test fit and clamping together. And then what I like to do is to go back and take and put a coat of polyurethane on the inside where it will be glued up so that any glue that escapes from the dovetails will not hit the areas that are visible and cause problems with the polyurethane later. I also like to put a coat of polyurethane on the complete bottom because you won't be able to get at the edges of that later. And after the poly is dry, I just take and uh, spread some glue. And then I like to use one of those little silicone brushes that the glue comes right off of after it hardens to kind of spread it into all the areas of the dovetail. So when you glue it together, there'll be no voids. And then the same thing with the um, pockets in the dovetail. Just put a drop of glue in them and take it and spread it around a little bit with a brush. And I'm really not too worried if it oozes out because there is polyurethane to protect the inside of the drawer where I can't really sand it later. And the assembly of the drawer is pretty simple and straightforward after having all the pieces prepared and um, glue spread on them. Everything just kind of snaps together like a puzzle. And um, once you fit the pieces together, I place some clamps on it next to... Um, kind of help hold everything together and start pulling it together and then at that point in time I will take a square and check all my corners to make sure that the um, the part is completely square 
and um, not racked or anything because that would cause problems later. So once that I know that everything is perfectly square, um, what I'll do is I'll take and I'll throw a bunch of extra clamps on it just to be safe and uh, pull everything together, then let that sit for a couple of hours. And once the glue is dry, you can see that the dovetails do stick out just a tad bit, but that really makes it a lot easier for sanding. So I just take the drawer and I clamp it to my bench, a couple of bar clamps so I can have it at a comfortable height to um, just take a belt sander to it and knock the edges of the uh, dovetails flat, flush with the sides and back of the drawer. For my first attempt with that uh, Stanley jig, I'm really, really happy with the um, outcome of it. So they should be good. Next, I'm getting ready to glue up the top. I have the uh, top boards cut and they're slightly oversized. The first thing I always do when I'm gluing up something like that and I want it to be flat is I'll take all the boards and I'll do um, face to face on them and I'll run them over the joiner at the same time. And that actually will give you a um, perfectly flat glue up no matter what happens. If the board should rock a little bit or the fence should be off of here, you'll still get a good flat glue up. With all the boards joining now, as you can see, they're really nice tight fit on them all. The next thing I do is I go back and I'm going to be um, cutting pockets to put biscuits in to give the glue a little bit extra help of holding everything together. Um, biscuits are real easy to cut. You just uh, set up your tool and just draw lines on the mating parts to line them and they go in in a second. I used to use dowels for everything when I did glue ups like this, but boy, that really took an awful lot of time. And um, sometimes you get one or two that was off and would give you a hard time when you're trying to pull them together and glue them up. I feel that the uh, biscuits are really a much better solution that allow some uh, slop when you're gluing things together. Um, I just kind of do a dry clamp to make sure everything is good. Then I'll go back and I'll spread glue, put a little bit in the slot, and I'll make sure that all the edges are also covered. And um, just kind of build everything up. I'll do the first board and I'll put the biscuits in it. Then I'll apply glue to the um, next board and I'll stack that on top of the first one. And then just continue on until they're all stacked up and ready to be clamped. You do want to try to um, do this process pretty quick because sometimes the glue will set up and grab before you're done and you really don't want that to happen. It turns out to be more trouble trying to move things around later and um, you don't always get a good glue joint then. So once everything is uh, biscuited together, just take a couple of um, pipe clamps and clamp it up. I like to uh, put strips of wood under the clamps that I put on the face side of it because the black iron pipe sometimes will give, if the glue contacts it, it will give you a black stain on the wood that is basically impossible to get out without sanding real deep. So um, that's a good pointer to follow. Um, after the glue up dries, it's just a matter of hitting it quickly with the belt sander to make sure everything is 100% flush. And, and I usually uh, use an 80 grit belt at this point for the uh, first sanding to try to kind of get all the imperfections and marks out of the wood. Then I'll take my double action sander and I will go down to um, like a 120 grit to start out with and then eventually I'll finally wind up going up to about a 220 grit before finishing. And to make it so there are no problems with expansion and contraction, the sides actually have to be glued up with the grain running vertical and using three shorter pieces so they move with the top as everything moves. Um, so I start by gluing them up and then when I'm done with the gluing I ran them over my joiner just to get a perfectly flat surface and then I just did a little hit through the planer to, to make sure that they were perfect and they came out real good and I really like the grain pattern that I got on these pieces. And then next, after having the pieces cut out, I decided to just kind of hold everything together and set it together so I can take some final measurements for the um, width of the top and the back that are needed and to make sure that my slides have the proper clearance to work with no uh, binding or whatsoever. So the next thing I do is I um, 
put the sliding table on my table saw and I just kind of go back and I cut the top to the proper width in squareness so everything um, will fit together properly. I then wanted to put some radiuses on the top corners of the two sides and I decided to just try that little Harbor Freight sander that I had just bought to um, to do that. And the thing worked really good. It ground them in really nice and smoothly and um, no burning or nothing. So I'm happy with the way it worked. So the next thing that I did is I took everything back to the bench and I kind of manually put it together again just to double check that everything was going to fit properly. I then went over to the router table and I did the uh, beading on both sides of the uh, two sides to make them look a little bit better than just a plain rounded corner. And when doing the beading, I actually had to turn the uh, RPM way down on the router as far as I could just to avoid getting any burning in the cherry. The next thing that I had to do was lay out the location of the biscuits for joining the uh, two sides to the top. I decided to add a couple of biscuits in here and along with some Craig screws that I'll be uh, drilling the holes for later. With the biscuit holes cut in the top, I then went over and I cut the uh, matching holes in the two sides, which I had to adjust the fence down just a little bit to lower them so I would have the uh, one inch overlap between the top and the sides to keep the microwave set in place. I just love using these biscuits. They're just so easy to um, cut the slots for them. And when everything goes together, you know that it's in the right place if you cut the biscuits in the right place. Now, once the uh, biscuit slots are all cut, I just threw some biscuits in them. And I dry fit everything together to go back through and just make sure that um, all the dimensions fit and everything worked perfectly before going to the next step in um, adding all the Craig screw holes. On the inside of my box, all the parts will be um, pulled together and held together using these Craig screws. Um, so I'm drilling holes in the back section right now. And that part will mount to the bottom of the top. I only have one of the old, I think it's a Craig R3 jig or whatnot. But I tell you what, I really love these screws when it comes to putting things together. Um, so as you can see, I've got some biscuits cut in there. And I've got the Craig screw holes. And I just put a drop of glue on the two pieces. And then put them together and let the screws pull everything right down. By using the biscuits in there, it keeps the Craig screws from sliding around and whatnot. So everything pulls together nice and flat and square with these screws. And then with the um, the back mounted onto the bottom of the top, next thing I do is I go through and I locate the um, holes. And I just use the fixture to drill all the, the holes for the Craig screws. Um, one thing I found out was that you can get a clamp at Harbor Freight for about $3 instead of buying that expensive Craig clamp to hold it together when you drill. Now with all the uh, biscuit pockets cut and Craig screw holes drilled, what I do is I just put a little light layer of glue on the ed both edges of the top. And then I um, located the two sides on there. It takes a little bit of tapping to get the... Um, the biscuits to set because I think they swell over time. The longer you have them, the more they swell. Um, then I just do a couple of clamps on everything and go back in and um, put a peg screw in each of the holes and it pulls everything up tight and um, you've got an instant assembly that's ready to use. Once you get used to using this um, Craig drilling system and these Craig screws, um, you'll never go back to anything else. The screws are just fantastic because you can basically drive them into anything. And the way the tip on them is cut, they will not split the wood no matter how close you are to the edge of the grain. It's just amazing how well that they work. Here, everything is all glued up and screwed together, and I just took some damp rags to wipe off a little bit of the extra glue. Now at this point, I uh, check the fit of everything one last time before going back through and then doing a final sanding down to a 220 grit 
on all the parts and then going on to um, applying two coats of polyurethane to each of the parts with a um, thorough sanding with 320 grit sandpaper between each one. I figured that I would use polyurethane on this project because you never know if something should drip coming out of the microwave or what. Make these little uh, painting standoffs just by taking some blocks of wood and some uh, screws coming up through the bottom of them. And they're a lot cheaper than trying to buy them. And they really do help you when you're trying to paint all sides of a um, item such as a drawer or whatnot. Now for the uh, drawer handle, I had a piece of bubinga left over from an old project. And I decided to um, cut it out of that on my CNC router. As you can see, the um, first pass I had a problem with where the router bit actually came loose. I think because the wood is so hard, the router bit um, slipped. So I had to go back and relay it out and take thinner cuts with the router. And um, the second cut, I messed up by not resetting the X on it. And then finally, I did a third cut, and I wound up with a good handle. And I am... Uh, really happy with the design and look of the handle so I just had to do a little bit of sanding on it and then I took it to the router table and I rounded all the edges on it and then I went back and that also got two coats of polyurethane with a good sanding in between after everything was dry the um, next job is to mount the slides so I just kind of cut a strip of wood to use to get everything uh, parallel to the base of them in the position that I wanted and seeing how the movement of the wood will be in the direction that it is, it wound up that I could only put screws in the front holes of the slide. I used the uh, first hole that was really basically just a round fixed hole to put the first screw in. And then I went back, there was another hole about maybe two inches back from that one in the front that was a slotted hole and I put a screw in that slot. I made sure that it was in the center of the slot and I did not tighten it too much when I tightened it so it would have room for moving. But the entire back of this slide is not screwed in place and I'll show you how I mount that in a little later. Next I went back and I got all the final dimensions for the drawer front and I cut the drawer front out of a piece of figured material and then put two coats of polyurethane on that also. Um, then I went back and I put some spacers in place and held the drawers in place and I mounted the slide rails to the side of the drawer. As you can see they stick out a little bit in the front and there's actually a pocket cut out of the back of the um, cabinet for them to continue on through the back of them. To allow the um, cabinet to move without affecting the slide, what I did is I just built a couple of uh, plexiglass blocks that support the back of the slide, and they keep it from moving up and down, but they will allow it to slide in and out as the um, weather changes and the wood expands and contracts. Over a um, piece of wood that this wide, you probably will see about a quarter of an inch seasonal expansion and contraction. And you'll also see that the slides do extend out the back because I had a problem where there was no such thing as a 15-inch um, slide. So I had to go to 16-inch slides to get the extension that I needed. And I had to figure out how to fit them in the shortest space possible. I picked up the uh, slides at Home Depot. And I think that uh, whenever you want a drawer that is going to be open and closed continuously, and you want the smoothest um, movement of the drawer and be able to handle a load of up to 100 pounds that I think it's well worth spending the $13 I think it was for the set of slides. Um, everything just moves so smoothly with them. The uh, drawer mounted and everything moving really smooth and properly. The next thing to do is to put the front panel on it. Uh, what I do is I put some double-sided tape on the back of the drawer to make it easy to locate it exactly where I want. Then what I'll do is I'll take and um, I'll just flip it up and I have spacers to get my even spacing all around that I require and then just kind of um, push it in place once everything is located properly which will uh, adhere to the drawer temporarily until you get the screws in it. Then it's just a matter of um, pulling the drawer out 
and I put a couple clamps on it to keep it from moving when the screws go in, just in case something should let loose. And then I just go back and I actually use a couple more of those Craig screws in it because they do not split and they actually hold really good from what I found out. I find that using the uh, double-sided tape to locate it and temporarily hold it in place really helps me keep everything be um, perfectly aligned and get even gaps when I build something like this. With the drawer front on now, the um, next thing to do is to locate and lay out the holes for mounting the handle. I decided to just use the uh, screws from the inside of the cabinet for it because there really isn't a lot of weight on this drawer and it pulls really simply, really easily. So um, what I did is I located the handle where I wanted it and I centered it and I used some masking tape to draw my lines on so I could drill the holes. And now I drilled this through the um, through the drawer front and the drawer and if you notice there's a piece of wood on the back to kind of keep everything from tearing out when the drill comes out the other side which really helps a lot then i just clamped a couple pieces on to line everything up squarely when i put the screws in and again i just inserted a couple of a um, little bit longer craig screws from the back through everything and they held it in place really good. Um, the nice clean installation and I didn't have to tap any holes or anything. I had thought about inserts and I figure if the Craig screws ever come loose, I can always go back through and drill some inserts in it. Um, once you take off all the uh, alignment brackets and uh, remove the tape where I had to mark the center of everything, uh, the door, drawer handle worked out really good. It's really comfortable to use. It's a nice size. And once the cherry turns a little bit um, red, the cherry will go really good with the Babinga handle, I think. The next thing I did is I went back over and I gave everything a, um, a good waxing. I use uh, Johnson's Paste Wax. I like to use that on everything. And then I use 4-0 steel wool to apply it, which helps uh, smooth out the finish. Now for no skid feet, I took a couple pieces of a closed cell um, weather stripping that I put on the bottom, which actually uh, I find it works pretty good. It will um, shrink down to about a 60,000 thickness, and at the same time, it'll give you a no, no skid grip. And I'm really happy with the way it came out. Everything is extremely smooth working, and... Um, now it's time to take the unit upstairs and make sure that it fits under my microwave. And it worked out perfectly. It was a perfect fit for the microwave. Um, fit nice in the corner of the counter and it got the microwave up and gave us extra room under it. And another thing is it actually makes it easier to um, get in the door of the microwave and see what you're doing without having to bend over so far. And the cherry will darken up slightly over time. Um, plus, it gave us a nice spot to put all of the um, plastic wrap and plastic bags and um, aluminum foil and whatnot that we use that we always had buried in the closet before and was kind of tough. We had to go find it every time we needed something. So overall, I am really very happy with the way it came out and the way it looks and the um, selection of the green pattern on the cherry that I used. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.